This is the Nebraska Greats, a weekly podcast as a service to the Nebraska Greats Foundation, which serves former collegiate athletes facing medical needs and financial challenges. Your tax-deductible contribution will change the life of a former college sports hero. Please give online at negreats.org. And now, here's your host, Jerry Murtaugh. All right, this is Jerry Murtaugh, former old-time linebacker at Nebraska on the first national championship team. And today we're with Bob Fig Newton, California boy that came all the way to Nebraska to play football, and he was in shock when he first arrived here. Former All-American, 12 years in the NFL. Bob, I know you're in California. The weather sucks here. How's it there? Yeah, I heard you guys got about a foot last week of snow. Yeah, uh, don't like. Yeah, it. I, I don't miss walking in that stuff. No, nope. you know, I, I, I uh, it's a little bit easier to walk out here. The weather's pretty good out here, Mert. Uh, and uh, I've been, you know, I'm dealing just like everybody else around the nation trying to get a vaccine uh, for the CV nineteen. The system's significantly backed up out here, so. Sure. Sure. Kind of preoccupied with that. Uh, we're speaking of the weather. Uh, you had a good story the first time you arrived here from California. Tell us about that when you got off the plane. Well, uh, I don't know if it was a good story. It was well, a, a very, very, very interesting. <laughs> it was very interesting. Uh, you know, I, I think I flew. It was around December of 1968 when I mm-hmm. when I flew out. And uh, Terrio and I, Bob Terrio, great linebacker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we we flew out together, and we we you know we're on the ride the whole way. Then we got off. We got off the plane, and there was not the tarmac where you you know you get out, you walk down the plank, and you walk right into a covered building. No, you walk. We walked down the stairs from the (laughs) plane, and then you had to walk about sixty yards (laughs) to the door. To the so I had this California very thin winter jacket on, and I I walked about twenty yards, and I had this cal- this mustache and there was icicles on it uh, <laughs> as I was walking, <laughs> and I and it, by and by by the time I got to see Coach Osborne and Jim Ross, who was the two coaches waiting for me. I gave them the dirtiest look that I could give them and said, there ain't no way I'm, I'm going to come back here, man. I can get back. I can get back on the plane right now and go home because it's going to be a waste of time. Okay. So oh, geez. Uh, it was cold, man. Oh. It, it was about three or four degrees, I think. And nobody <laughs> filled you in on what well, you I guess I, or I didn't listen. And, uh, well, that was probably it. That was probably part You didn't of it. listen. Yeah, <laughs> golly, you and Terrio. that's a yeah. pair to choose from. Yeah, Two and you know, then I, you know, then when you know, I ended up having a pretty good weekend, and and uh, rest his soul, Jim McFarland, who just recently passed away, yep. he was my he was the one that kind of showed me around that mm-hmm. weekend, and and as the weekend progressed, I I kind of just accepted the weather, but I I really got in touch with the enthusiasm of football in the state of Nebraska. I mean, you could just feel it. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so that was a real attractive uh, part of the visit. And cause I wanted to go somewhere where football was important and yep. part of the community. And that was definitely the, the case. Totally. When you mentioned Jim McFarland, he was our great tight end played about six years in the NFL, just passed away, did a great job uh, there. Then he, Pro, then he went on to be a lawyer and yeah. uh, tough, tough tight end, big and tough because I had to go yeah. against yeah. him for two years. He's on that 69 team. You uh, betcha. He was a senior when yep. we were juniors that year. Yeah. Yep. And no, he was a great tight end, great guy too. Yeah. I stayed in touch with Jim over the years. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the, the thing about here. Jim, when you come here, uh, he's not an exciting individual. Well, <laughs> And, hey, you know, um, it was, yeah. <laughs> you said I you, asked him to pick it up a little bit during yeah. the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Because I was in my party yeah. mode, you, you know, betcha. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? You come to Nebraska, all you have to do is drink. There's nothing else well, to do. <laughs> uh -huh, and I was I was a pretty good veteran at that uh, yeah, at the yeah. time. So yeah, 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 I asked him. I said, "Let's pick it up a little bit, Jim. Okay, it's getting a little slow here." <laughs> I could just imagine that. Oh Lord! And and he did. He went, we went and got some beer and yeah. and you know had a few beers and <laughs> laughed and had some laughs. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, let's tell you're in California. Let's give them a little background on your life when you left Nebraska. You're an All American. You you go the second round to the Bears, and what happened? How many years? Well, I tell you, when I left one thing, when I left Nebraska and went to the Chicago Bears, it was kind of like deja vu. I walked into their weight room, and it reminded me of walking into the Nebraska weight room that first in January of 1969, where all they had was that little universal <laughs> gym yeah. that's in the museum now. <laughs> that was and, it. And yeah. The Bears' weight room resembled that. I go, oh, wow, because by the time wow. you know, by the time you and I left our senior year, they had a very Boyd had done a great job getting that up, uh, upgrading that lifting program and the facility and getting more weights in there. Yes. So I went yeah. there. I go, wow. And so they it looked very similar <laughs> to the original <laughs> Nebraska weight. They had one bench press. I go, this is professional football. Yeah, I mean, yeah. really. So funny, they, you know, the next year they hired a strength coach, uh, Clyde Emmerich, and, mm -hmm. and they, they beefed it up. And, you know, the Bears got on board with a great strength program after yeah. that. Yeah. How many, uh, how many years were you with the Bears? Five, five years, 1971, five years. 1975. And my first quarterback there was Bobby Douglas. Wow. Kansas and he boy. never let me forget yeah. that evidently they came uh, to Lincoln in 68 and left with a win. Big time. Big time. What was, do you remember the score, Mert? Uh, it was a lot. That's all was I it? remember. I was starting as a sophomore. And, uh, you know, he, he could throw, but he was so big. Yeah, I, I yeah. kept saying, don't run. Just don't run. <laughs> Keep throwing the ball. Because yeah. I hit him a few times. He ran over me because – you know, I'm a 200 pounds on a good drinking week. And yeah. this man, I'm going, holy crap, he'd be. So, yeah. Well, you know, he he was. He was probably about 6'5", 235. Yes. 240. But in 72, which was my second year there, he set the NFL record for rushing for a quarterback. He gained 968 wow. yards, I think. Wow. And, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of fun to block for him because – if you did miss your block, I mean, he didn't go down real easy on a sack. You know, he would just wipe him yeah. away and take off, you know. <laughs> so it was kind of a, some insurance for an offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But he could run, man, and he yeah. was tough. Wow. And I really liked him as a teammate. Yep. And uh, yep. But we, we would ne needle each other, you know, with the Big 8 and with mm -hmm. Kansas and Nebraska and – all yeah. in fun. And, and on defense, you had the man, number 51. Oh, Dick yeah. He, that was – yeah. You know, Dick – Dick was coming off severe knee surgery right. uh, my first year there in 71. And uh, I, I, don't even, I don't even think he played that much in uh, – I think the knee surgery was in 69. He played in 70. But, you know, they held him out of training camp in 71 – and then uh, to just rest the knee and so forth. And then he ended up getting uh, uh, a player, comeback player of the year in 71. And I believe he was defensive player of the year too. He just had wow. a phenomenal year. Yep. It was just watching him play. You know, anytime he, a lot of times when he came off the field to come on a timeout and would want to talk to the coaches on the sidelines, and my rookie year, I wasn't playing a lot. So I, I would go over there and listen to their conversations because I, I, I just wanted to hear it because I'm sure it was interesting. And basically, Dick was telling the coaches what they were going to do. Ooh, yeah. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, the, <laughs> well, Dick, you think, uh, Dick, we want you to do this. And, you know, it was Dick. Well, we're going to, we're going to. We're going to red dog the two hole on this on this next play, and then he trot back out the field. You know? 
If why so waste? He, he, man, huh? why waste your time coming over and talking to him? You know what you're going to do. So yeah, yeah. So he's the only player that he intimidated. He intimidated everybody. He intimidated the opponents. Yep. He intimidated the referees. Wow. He intimidated his teammates. He intimidated the coaches, <laughs> cheerleaders, nobody, everybody, <laughs> the fans. Nobody. Yeah, nobody. That's uh, what, what a know. great guy. What a He's great, great, guy. And great. What guy. a phenomenal. Yeah, and you you got to know him yeah, that weekend. Got to know him. Did that uh, yep. for your the goal program. Yeah. yeah. So uh, did get to meet him, and uh, 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 we had a little argument the night before, and. Uh, uh, we were outside. We'd had a couple drinks. It was just him and I. And he was telling me how I was running the uh, program wrong. And then I got a little mad, and I says, uh, you know, you're, you're Dick Butkus. They run it for you. Me, I have to run. Then, he's, then he called me a couple filthy names, the F word. And, you what? know, I, to this day, that's the biggest honor I've ever received in my life sure. when Dick Butkus tells you to, uh, and I'm going, One wow, guys. you betcha. I take that to my grave. That's better yeah. than meeting the president, Dick Butkus. <laughs> I tell That's you. Right. So you left the Bears, you go to Seattle. Well, yeah, you know, I, I love the tradition of the Bears. You know, I, I got to see Gil Sears, his last play wow. or his last season was yeah. 71, and then he had to retire. Same thing with, you know, he had a bad knee. And then, you know, then they drafted Peyton in 1975. Uh, and they got to play with Walter one year. And I'll never forget uh, the the day of the draft. They I think we had like the second or third pick, maybe fourth pick, because we had a pretty bad season in 74. They draft Walter in the first, first round, the Bears. So the headlines the next day in the Chicago Tribune was, I mean, huge, bold, black print. Walter who? Wow. And with a big question mark. Wow. <laughs> nobody <laughs> knew him. Nobody, because he was from Jackson State, State, small school. Nobody yeah. knew him. They said, well, you know, Jim Finks, what are you? Well, he proved them wrong. Oh, big time. Pretty fast. Yeah. Pretty fast. <laughs> so. But yeah, yeah. but murdered. You know, the, we had three different head coaches in the five years. I was yeah. here, a lot of turnover. And I, so I just got to a point yeah. where I kind of wanted a, a new environment. And sure. uh, so I, we, it worked out. I, I asked them to release me. I said, you can trade me, you can cut me or waive me, but I don't want to be here next Monday. That was a game that uh, our last exhibition game in 76 that was in, in Washington at the Washington Redskins. So that they called me in the office that uh, Monday and they said, well, we tried to work out a trade for you. It didn't work out. So we're going to put you on waivers. I said, okay, thank you. I walked out. I was on a plane to Seattle that night wow. to uh, go with the, the Seahawks. And yeah. it turned out I spent six years there. Yep. It was a great experience. Yeah. Great. So great. It, worked out. Yeah. it worked out. Yeah. Let's get back to Nebraska. Let's talk, uh, we have some good stories. You show up in 69, 68, 67. We were six and four. You had some nice offers. You come to a losing football team. Why? Well, you know, part of that, when Coach Osborne came and recruited me and he came out to my house in La Mirada, California, and I'll never forget, one of the last things he said to me, and that I, I think it was in November, maybe early November or 68, but he said, now, Bob, we're going to be on national TV this week and oh. uh, we're going to be playing. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> he goes, we're going to be playing the, the Oklahoma Sooners and give you a good opportunity to watch our game. Mm -hmm. And I said, great, I'll do that. <laughs> so I got up, oh. I got up early Saturday morning and, Horrible. You know, three hours later, I think the final score was 47 to nothing on national TV. They took it off at half. That's how oh, bad it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I remember this is this is my this is one of my first thoughts, you know, I, yep. that I had after that. I go, 
Wow. Well, you know, I might get a chance to play there. You know? <laughs> I might get a chance because <laughs> we're, we're you know, so bad. Oh, well, that, that's a good, well, that's a good way to think about but, it. But, but, you know, it was, but, you know, with the changes they made Big time. in the, when that winter program, yes. you know, I still remember almost mm. every day of that winter program. Uh, that was challenging. And I think it, I guess it, it did toughen us, toughen yes. the team up. That it did. You're right that we go from there. That year, the 69 team, we went 9-2. and two. Right. We got beat right. by Southern Cal, I think, first or second game. Yeah. And they were first great. Game, mm-hmm. After that, first two games or whatever we lost, uh, nobody could beat us at the end of the year. That's how good we became. We had yeah. about... I mean, how many of you uh, JC guys were starting that in '69? You... Well, it was, it, you know, it was me, Terrio, and Dale Ditter that came out, right? Rick. Receiver, yeah. 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 And then, you remember they they moved Bob to def to defense. They redshirted him that year. Well, Bob was a fullback, and right? He came was... here. And we right. had Dan Snice and uh, right. we good good football players. Mike Green. Mike Green. Mike Green, Green yeah. 69. Yeah, the best move, they moved him to linebacker. Moved him Ooh. to linebacker. Ooh. And wow. you guys became the two inside linebackers yep. for yep. two national championships. Yep. And, uh, and, and then the next year they brought Carl Johnson and Keith Workman and then Dick Rupert. Rupert. Yes. Yeah. They brought three, three more. Yeah. Rupert was from L.A. Harbor in Southern California, and Keith was from uh, Rio Hondo in junior college, and Carl was from Phoenix Junior College. Yeah, yeah. In Phoenix, so, boy, that made a difference too on our team. That offensive line, what happened there, defense. So, uh, uh, Devaney yeah. was smart. Go and get the JC guys. Get them in well, here. You know the the JC system out here, Jerry, for years has been heavily recruited. I don't think as much now, but in the '60s and the '70s, yes. And 80s, yes. because if you get a kid in here, you get two years of experience. Yes, you do. And you know it's hard to, to go as a freshman. Uh, I mean, freshmen can play now, but, but back then they couldn't. And they're only eighteen or nineteen. They haven't developed yet. I think. Right. I still think they should have a freshman football team because mo- those freshmen are coming in, sit the bench, don't get any playing time. They should be playing freshmen, getting the experience, and you might have yeah. one or two of these young men that could play a little varsity, but they should they ought to think about that. Then you money bet. comes in. Oh, well, we don't have the money. Oh, bull. That'd be like my well, wife. You. That'd be like yeah. my wife saying she doesn't have my money. You know what I mean? Come on. We we yeah. know she does. You we know she does. Yes. So well, you know, I was when I went there as a yeah. So I would have my first year I was a junior, but I saw some of those guys coming up from that freshman team. Yes. Indeed. And I go wow, and I think they went four and zero that year. Yes. They beat everybody. They played pretty. You know, we had Van yeah. and Taggy oh, and Lord. Uh, Jeff Hughes. Oh. Uh, yeah, there were so it was, many. It was, there was a it, lot of them. Oh, then the yeah. next year, too, was, Ooh. you know, Richie Glover and oh, Willie yeah. Harper. And so three years there, it was just back-to-back great talent yep. coming in. Yep, yep. And, and, that, and building building on it each yep. year. Yep, that was fun. Yep. Uh, you know, we had a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of good times. Uh, going back one thing, uh, in when we got beat by Oklahoma, forty-seven to nothing on national championship, we ended up six and four. Right. Yeah. They offered us a bowl appearance. Devaney says, "Are you crazy? As bad as we are, we're not going to get embarrassed again." So he he did not accept a bowl bid, and. You know, well, we didn't want to go anyway. Enough humiliation. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, one thing that was like that. Yeah. You know, and I, I kind of got the history fairly quickly when I got there that Coach Vanny came there in 62 and really turned the program. Whoa. So there was a huge expectation there to win. And you could feel Every that year. as a newcomer coming in, that there was a lot of pride of that of that program. 
and uh, they were, but they were reeling a little bit. And yeah, they had two years of six and four. You guys did, you know, I mean, that's a winning season for a lot of colleges, right. but for Nebraska, Ooh. it was not meeting the expectations. You're right. From 62 to 66, I mean, they're winning 10, 9, 10, 11 games, yeah. going to the Orange Bowl and all these bowls doing all, and then two bad years. Then he came right back again. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he had good players. He went out, recruited yeah. you guys and us and all that. That's yeah, good recruiting. Did. And, you know, then we got Johnny. Johnny came in sure. as a sophomore. Sophomore. Wow. And he was a threat. Sure. Uh, from every position he played to yeah. score a touchdown. Yeah. Every, any play, he was yeah. capable of scoring a touchdown. So. I mean, we, we were just loaded in 69, we're, 70. Wow. Great running backs with oh. Arduna and uh, Jeff Kinney. Wow. And, uh, you know, you, the black shirts. I mean, that's I would like to see them get that tradition back. Because, man, that that name had a lot of pride. Bingo. I mean, that was a real honor back then. Yeah, yeah. It, they had such an uh, intimidation factor. Yeah. I'll tell you, when, when Snice and I go out for the flip, when we were uh, seniors, you could yeah. see the not fear, but the uh oh, this is Nebraska. You could yeah. see it in their captain's eyes, looking at them. You know, they put their head down or their eyes would be going. They wouldn't look at you in the eye because they knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah. So that was yeah. That's you know, I, you know, they school. You know, schools coming to Lincoln now and. They go out with a win. It's not a big deal. Back in those days, if you oh. beat Nebraska and Lincoln, yes, that was national news. Yep, yep, yep. So it's it's uh, it's been a rough ride for all the former athletes that played there, the fans, everybody, and uh, you know, I don't know what to say other than uh, they better start winning down there, or us old guys are going to revolt. Yeah, you know, I. I <laughs> I'm holding. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it there was there was a, a tremendous legacy that was built there. Yes, over decades, uh, '60s, '70s, wow. '80s, '90s, and in the 2000s, it's just it's been you know touch and go. You know, uh, but I, I, I'd like to see that legacy come back. Of, you know, being a we were we had a reputation of being a tough physical team. Four quarters. We ran the ball a lot. Yes. We tackled hard. Yes. And we didn't give up a lot of yards. And 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 we and we moved the ball on offense. But but I like that. I like that image of being a physical team. Yep. You know. Definitely. And yeah. Great. A lot football. of that came after we got bigger and stronger and faster. Bingo. Too. Boyd Epley. You know, with yeah. With Boyd. With Boyd's program. Yes, indeed. Golly, it was something. Consider. Yeah. Yeah. Great things happening. Uh, uh, quickly, I want to talk a little bit about the Nebraska Grace Foundation. Yeah. Yes, we started this foundation about 13 and a half years ago. What we do, we help former collegiate athletes in the state of Nebraska, collegiate athletes, if, you're a, if you've lettered in a sport at any of the 16 colleges or universities in the state of Nebraska, man or woman, and you have medical or emergency needs, you get a hold of us. Bob, you know about this program. You've been working with us. Go to negreats.org. All the information there, our website, application, we need recipients. Of course, you need money. We're a 501c3 and all that. But uh, I'm looking, which the whole file, we need to help our brothers and sisters. They're out there, but they're so proud they won't ask for help. They're not like you and I. Heck, I'd be crying right away for help. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you've been to our events. What give me a little bit about it. Yeah, I've how long how long has Nebraska Greats been around now? About eight or nine years? Well, I started it about thirteen years ago 
And okay. uh, it's really come in about five or six years ago when we got, uh, you know, everything put together with the state and our 501c3 package. And uh, so it's uh, uh, it's amazing what the foundation has done. And we've helped athletes from uh, uh, Hastings College, York College, uh, Nebraska, Creighton, Omaha U, uh, Dana College, the old Dana College, uh, all the schools. Everybody's equal here. It's not just Nebraska or Creighton or Omaha U, all 16 schools, right? Yeah, I, I think it's a tremendous foundation and a, a, a specialized benefit for for the state of Nebraska for those the athletes that have gone to any school in yes. the, like college or university in the state to especially in these times that we're in right now with this pandemic and so forth there's going to be there's just a, a lot of consequences from it health wise and so forth and you know I get to read the stories the the, the stories that the recipients write yes and you know, how grateful they are and, uh, and just, you could feel it, you know? So I, you know, I compliment you, Jerry, that, cause I knew you when you had that program goal yeah. back, uh, several years ago, the having the fitness instructors in the high schools and right. stuff, physical fitness you, in the high schools. So, yep. But, uh, that didn't, uh, they yeah. didn't take to it real well. I don't know why not, but, uh, maybe because I was leading it, you know, how that goes. So, uh, but everything else, I mean, the foundation is amazing. What the people of this state. Yeah. And the, your events are a lot of fun. There's oh, yeah. a lot of former players there. Sure. Uh, Heisman trophy winners, Mike Rozier and Eric yeah. Crouch and a lot of former players. And I've gotten to quite a few of them the last couple of years. I haven't been able to get to them, but you know, I hope to get back to, to the one this year. You uh, bet. Off in July. I in think July, happened. right. And we bring in a lot of former athletes from the smaller schools. The yeah. Danny Woodheads, uh, the great receiver yeah. from Omaha or UNO, University of Nebraska at Omaha, the great tight end. All these guys, Tom Crop from Kearney State. We yeah. This is for all of us, and this yeah. is a great thing. We're down yeah. to a couple more minutes here, Fig. Uh, Good. One good story at the Orange Bowl after we won the national championship. Well, I didn't get much sleep that night. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I was, you know, I kind of specialized in partying a little bit in those years, yeah. you know. And I kind of <laughs> noticed that. While I, you know, I always I, saw you kind of. I was at the same away. parties or whatever. You know, that's what you do when you're you winning know, national championships. Of course, it's a kind of a national story. Our little trip to Juarez <laughs> the year before. Yeah, yeah that, that was the Sun Bowl. Well, about five or six a- guys got thrown in jail over oh, Juarez, yeah. and I was the savior that time. You were, yeah. I did. I got you all I got I the hell out of you got, Yeah, you got lucky. I think you started it at all. And that anyway, was another great but, story. But go ahead. The uh, the Orange Bowl, you know, I had to go to the Senior Bowl right after that. And uh, I, uh, as I said, I stayed up most of the night. Yes, you did. And then I then I uh, I had to catch a plane the next day though to the, to Mobile, Alabama, and I uh, I got to play in the Senior Bowl there. Dave Walling was one of our one of the uh, yep participants. Uh, you bet, Nebraska players. Kind of make a long story short. I get, I went there and I you know I had a fair week of practice. But I kind of kept partying and everything. My body wasn't getting a lot of rest. Anyway, I ended up getting my the crap knocked out of me in the Senior Bowl by Jack Youngblood. And uh, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was a wonderful experience of uh, my uh, my first entry into professional football in the Senior Bowl. Now you you went to the Hula Bowl. Went to the Hula Bowl. Yeah, I took the Hula. wife there or. Yeah. One of the many ex-wives I have. So, uh, yeah. is it, it was it you and Ingles went there? Uh, Joe Orduna and I. Did went. Joe go too? Yeah, Joe, yeah. Joe and I. Yeah, yeah, had uh, a good time. 
Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I kept, I kept celebrating that national championship. For oh a few days. boy, did we, did we. Yeah. You know, uh, one quick story. I'm in Hawaii. Uh, Joe Paterno is the linebacker coach on our side and they brought Jack Ham. I never heard of Jack Ham. So I, yeah. so we start practicing. All of a sudden, Coach Paterno, uh, we're going through drills, and he stops practice. He says, I want everybody to do it like Jack does it. And me, you know, I've never been an outspoken person, but I told Jack and I told Coach to shove it. I says, we're, <laughs> I'm doing it my way. Uh-huh. Guess who didn't start in the hula ball? Or the hula ball. They t- they took a middle guard and put him in my spot. So I should have shut up. And anyway, I should have done it like Jack does it. Jack Ham. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, he ended up being a pretty good player. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. My big mouth again. Well, so, and you know, but I think you and I still had a heart, you know, we we had these lessons, but we were kind of hard learners. Sometimes yes, we I had to learn the lesson two or three times. Yep, yep. At you least, know? at least. I mean, that's why it took me five years to get a, a PE degree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took me 22 years <laughs> yeah. to, get a, to get a bachelor's well, degree. <laughs> I mean, uh, I never listened. They said, go to class. And I go, no, I don't have to. Then I find well, out you have you, to. You know, the, you know, getting back to that 69 January real quick. We've got a couple more minutes, so make it yeah. quick there. This Fig. is going to be quick because I, I had to get at my, I had to be at my first class on Monday at eight o'clock in the morning, <laughs> got up, put on my winter coat, my California winter coat. I walked outside. <laughs> I walked about 20 yards. It was freaking freezing. And I turned around, and Terrio goes, what are you doing back here at the dorm? I said, I'm going back to bed. There ain't no way I'm staying out there. That's how I started my academic career. <laughs> yeah, that same with me. That's why it took us so long. But, uh, Fig, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I, you, I heard a rumor you're looking for a home in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm open all right, I, I, I got some options that I'm looking at. Well, so, good. You're in California. I love, I love the state of Nebraska. You so. bet. You bet. Yeah. And please, you if you do come the next couple months, buy an overcoat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. got it. All right. I appreciate this, Fig. Thank you, you and bet. it's been a good talking to you. You bet. Nice talking to you, Mert. This has been Nebraska Greats, a weekly podcast serving the Nebraska Greats Foundation. You can find each episode on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Please give generously to serve Nebraska's former sports heroes in need at negreats.org. And be sure to follow the Any Greats on Facebook and Twitter.